Welcome to a video that I've been really excited to be making. This is probably one of the few videos recently that I've been really excited to actually jump on and talk about and make a video discussing as there's many different takes that I'll have in this video that some people will either completely disagree with or completely agree with. So it'll be very interesting to see some of the responses. Now, tier listing all of the Assassin's Creed games, as you can see, I've already put every single game and or film that I have never touched in my life down in that haven't played section. However, we've also got all the rest of the main life franchise that I'm going to be discussing in this video where we've got best ever, extremely good, almost perfect, uh, you could miss out on for the most part, it's okay, and then just burn it please. So let's discuss some of these games. We're going to just go in chronological order with these. So the first game on this list is Assassin's Creed 1. I'm going to say this and I think this is a you could miss out on. You don't need to have played this game and also overall I'd say it's a game that if you haven't played it many times in the past, especially when the game first came out, for example, that wasn't my first Assassin's Creed game. My first one was Assassin's Creed 2. Trying to play Assassin's Creed 1 feels very clunky. I do think you could probably say the same about the ones that I'm going to be talking about in a moment. However, for me, I don't think the game is anything in particular like over the top groundbreaking special. It kind of was just the building blocks for everything. So it's one of those that you can give a miss and I wouldn't class as, you know, getting into that tier of it's actually a good game. Now, the almost perfect category, I will just say this, is that that doesn't actually mean uh, that it's extremely good. Almost perfect to me is just saying, you know what, uh, actually we'll say almost good instead, because I think that will be a better way of putting it, just because don't want people thinking that um, I'm going to be saying certain games are almost perfect and then almost good is a higher category. We'll now jump into Assassin's Creed 2. Now, in my heart, I feel like the best place to put this game is best ever. However, I do think I have to at least be somewhat reasonable and say that it's in the extremely good section. Now, if it was me and it was like overall just like I was negating any form of negative, then I would put this into best ever. However, this game does have a few things. Obviously, it's a bit clunky, especially going back and playing it. However, you do also have the great benefits of the fact of we got Ezio in this game. We also got Florence. We got, uh, we didn't get Rome in this game. Well, the Auditory Manor. And then we also got Venice. So obviously, we got to go to a few different areas. However, the main critique that I have of this game isn't anything to do with the story. It's not to do with the gameplay. It's not even to do with the easy combat. It is the colour correction. This game's colour correction is horrendous. Nobody will ever like this. The fact that everything is extremely white is awful. Now, AC Brotherhood will just put into best ever right away. Let's get this out of the way. For me, I always prefer playing through Assassin's Creed 2. I don't know why. I just find some disconnect with Brotherhood for me. However, I will still say that gameplay-wise, visually, story-wise, everything it is better in Brotherhood than it was in 2. Brotherhood is just an effective step up across the board, and 2 is definitely still the game that I would generally, if I was to sit down and just say I'm going to play one or the other, but that's because I'm someone who will just sit and play the whole Ezio collection anyway. So on average, I've played the second game a lot more than I've played any of the others from, you know, just starting up the game and then just not making it to Brotherhood. But yeah, overall, Brotherhood is definitely up there. Uh, obviously, we've got Cesare, one of the best villains in Assassin's Creed, if not the best villain, I'd probably say. And it's very hard to compete with the villain, the story arc of this game, uh, the characters that you do get. I felt like there was a slight disconnect. Like, I'd say the first game, even though it is centered purely around Ezio and having characters help him along the way, I felt like Brotherhood. I understand that the premise of Brotherhood was him becoming and stepping up to this role of we are now, or at least I am now the one in charge of the Brotherhood and leading it forward. It just felt like there wasn't much camaraderie between the characters and it didn't really feel as if I was connecting with them as much as let's say in Assassin's Creed 2 where you kind of had dedicated full sequences to spending these times of characters. Now though, Revelations. I'm going to put this game in almost good. <laughs> Now, I always love the idea of putting it in either extremely good or best ever, purely because I think Old Man Ezio is one of the best versions of Ezio. I think this game does a really good job of tying up loose ends for Ezio's character and Altair's character. And also, overall, I'd say the game isn't that bad. The main two negatives 
is that the game is extremely short. It's only about six, seven hours, if I'm correct. I've literally got the whole game recorded on my PC, but I'm not going to double check that right now. Just the factor that they kind of swapped up the idea of the pacing of this game. For a game that's about six hours long, it does end up feeling slow. And in my video saying how I think this game is actually the most underrated Assassin's Creed game. However, for some people, they will probably find that as a negative for me. I don't. However, I have to at least be somewhat critical and not just think completely with an irrational way of viewing it. Then you have Assassin's Creed 2. I'm going to put it in the same category. I don't think this game is extremely good. I don't think it's anywhere near being the best. And I also think that it's a little bit better than just you could miss out on it. Purely for Haytham Kenway and honestly just the dynamic that they tried to show in this game of basically discussing for the first time that the Templars may not be as bad as the other games like to portray them as, as all the other games enjoy putting around the premise of it's an us versus them. Um, there's no way that they could ever be a connective force in any way. The reason why this game doesn't make it into the extremely good or best ever category is for one key reason, and that is the release of this game. A lot of people, we now just look back on this game fondly and think that oh, it was a great game. However, when it came out, it came out after the Ezio collection which basically meant they were screwed. Uh, Ezio is considered one of the best characters ever done in Assassin's Creed and even in games. Um, and then you're met with Connor. And we look back on Connor now saying it's understandable why he's so silent, why he's so broody, like all these different things. But when the game came out, nobody really cared. Nobody cared because they were paying full price for a game that fundamentally felt like a step up in some ways, but drawbacking in others. For example, Haytham was the main appeal of this game. People really liked his personality. However, Connor had zero of his personality, and it just made it a little bit more harder to get through. For me, I really do enjoy the game. However, overall, I do think that there is games on this entire list that outcompete it on many different levels. And next up, we're going to be discussing Black Flag, and I think this one may upset some people out there. But we have to do it. I think this game is not one of the best Assassin's Creed games for one reason, and I will just go over some of the best reasons of this game, just so I get out of the way of, you know, some of the comments that will be telling me how I'm completely wrong, delusional, and I don't know what I'm on about. So, I think Assassin's Creed Black Flag is the best way that they have ever done this, that the new games are trying to do, which is implement other entire cultures and ways of going about life. So, for example, the pirate experience, and coating it in the Assassin's Creed way. So effectively telling the story of a pirate, but then having elements of the Creed coming in, but not making the whole game evolve around the pirates or evolve around the Assassins. So I think this game does a really good blend of both of those. I think the open world is really good. The sailing for the time especially was amazing. And pretty much the whole change of pace for a lot of it. We also got a character that is very much on par with Ezio when it comes to a personality, likability, and overall just enjoyment of a character. However, my big takeaway is that I have not played Assassin's Creed Black Flag more than I have played even Assassin's Creed 3 Revelations. 2 or Brotherhood. For me, I've played Assassin's Creed Black Flag and I've completed it about three times or four times. I think from completing it from literally start to finish, I've done it about three times. And that is solely because I just don't find the game enjoyable enough to play through from start to beginning actively. Whereas Assassin's Creed 2, for example, I can play that from beginning to end. And that might just be a mixture of like really younger childhood nostalgia versus just being a teenager nostalgia but who knows i do think though that assassin's creed 2's plot of Ezio growing from this character that's extremely naive about the way he perceives everything to this a lot more stronger capable and overall just better version of himself by the end of the game a lot more of an appealing story than i do with edward but again i do think edward is an amazing character he definitely outbeats um every almost every single person on this list he beats out Shay, uh, Arno, every single character within Syndicate, Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla, all of them, I would say anyway. And then we have Assassin's Creed Rogue, which I've made a video about this. I've made a video essay discussing this, how I think this game was misunderstood, overshadowed, and most importantly, just underrated. And I do think the game is underrated. However, I also think it kind of sits in the same boat as Assassin's Creed 3 of like a, it's underrated, 
but it's not necessarily underrated because of how many people think it's underrated. But overall, I think this game is going to be in the you could miss out on. I love this game and I think that what they did with this game is a great concept and they should have done it for more games moving forward. Even making a DLC, for example, where you play from the Templar perspective for this game. I think it would have been so much better. I think, honestly, if they made something like, for example, the Assassin's Creed 3, let's say, they made that today and they did all of like Connor's side of it, all of that. They did it the way they wanted to do it with this game, but then showed the entirety of Haytham's side, or at least play, let's say, from Charles Lee's perspective throughout the whole game, I think that would have been a more fun experience to see kind of how the Templars interacted and how they dealt with losing each member as they were kind of being taken down one by one. I think it would have been interesting, but I do think Rogue has to sit in the you could miss out on section, purely because it doesn't really change much to the franchise, outside of obviously connecting it to Unity and connecting it to 3 and 4. It is pretty much the game that connects all of them together in different ways. Obviously, you've got Haytham connecting it with Assassin's Creed 3. You get the mentions of Connor as well by the end of the game. You have the death of uh, Arno's dad connecting it to Unity. And then as well as that, you've got all the ship mechanics and everything like that connecting it to Black Flag. So all in all, it is going to have to sit in the you could miss out on. It's a six hour game. That on release was £50, bit of a scam if you ask me, um, it's a massive collectathon, but Shay as a character is an appealing character and I do think the story was decent, but not necessarily the best. Now though, let's talk about Assassin's Creed Unity and I'm going to say it right now. I think this game is actually extremely good, or at least on the top end of almost good. I do think that it outbeats at both of these games and would be at this top end. However, I think that it's actually miles a step up of Assassin's Creed 3 and Revelations. They at least tried with Arno's character to make him appealing. The setting is amazing. I think Paris is probably one of the best designed cities in one, the whole of games. Secondly, the Assassin's Creed franchise. The immersion of walking around, the sounds, the look, everything about this game just screams Paris in that time setting. But also, one thing that you gain with this one is also the amazing parkour. Obviously, something that we can't be forgetting about is the parkour of this game. Nobody really does ever about this game. There's a reason you still see to this day TikToks of things like the parkour system of this game. And you still see videos going viral on YouTube of people doing parkour on this game. It's insane. But the reason why it is at this bottom half and or just sits in this in-between zone is for two reasons. One is the leveling system, and secondly, the storyline kind of drops off in the second half of this game, making it a little bit slower, making it a little bit less appealing. And I do think the story was going really well for like the first six sequences. Then it's like it's a bit iffy in the sixth, seventh, and eighth, and then the just the last load, it just kind of goes off the rails of we're now in a depressing Arno life, which sure you can say that it makes sense for him being all depressing and it makes sense for the way everything goes down, but to me, I just don't think it's that much of a good time when all of the game ends up just becoming this depressing fest of just nothing more than him chasing after Elise who blatantly doesn't either want his help or when she eventually chooses that he wants his help, just ends up ignoring most of his advice, but that, that's me anyway. Um, but yeah, the second one was the leveling system, and that might sound interesting to some of you. I'm not actually anti the idea of the leveling system. However, what I am anti is the fact that this game was the first game to introduce a leveling system to Assassin's Creed, like a proper one for the character. And the issue that that actually brought up and arose for this entire franchise was the fact that there was a cap on at least sequence 9. That's when I noticed it. When I was playing through the game for my video about Unity, I noticed because I was playing through it and ignoring all of the side content, because this was the first game where they really tried to focus on having more important side content, it literally just hard caps you out of nowhere. You will be playing sequence 9 and you'll notice a massive increase in damage or against characters, stealth zones, everything about this game when you hit sequence 9 just increases. Which is basically the argument of saying, hey, just go play the, see like the side content. That's basically what the game's trying to tell you. It's going, go play the side content, come back to us later. Which is fine. However, when you've had, if you look at this, one, two, well, one, two, three, four, five, six games in the past 
like what five years by that point or six years are you then going to tell the people who have been playing these games and been playing them the way they have been designed to then go even though we've never been good at side content and even in this game the side content isn't amazing now go play it for like the next hour or two level up a bit and then come back to us it's one of those where it's it's a bit off-putting and then obviously i think there is the multiplayer issue of how bad that is so again i don't think that this is necessarily a awful game i don't think it's the best ever but i don't think it's worse than these two so i think actually i'll put it at the top of that category because the more that i think about it i think it deserves to at least be in that side of it now syndicate honestly eh, it's okay i don't care about it i <laughs> It's a game that wasn't for me. Everything is basically just dumbed down Unity. Less bugs, but honestly, I didn't like the London setting. I'm English and it's like, oh cool, they're going to England. It just wasn't interesting. They added a grappling hook, the traversal wasn't good, the combat was okay, the storyline was meh. And outside of that, really, was there any redeeming factors? No, especially for the time, and a lot of people forget this again. We're going back and looking at this entire time period of Assassin's Creed and we think, these games were so good. These games were amazing. We were just wrong back then. No, we weren't wrong back then. We wanted a different formula. We've just had six games, if not more, if you actually class the Ezio Collection as their own separate games. We'll say seven to be just exact overall, because we'll say Rogue's a DLC for Black Flag, and then Revelations is secretly a DLC for Brotherhood or something. Those games were becoming stale. The open world traversal was becoming a bit stale. The way we moved around, the way the combat was done, everything was just becoming stale and people want to look back at these games now fondly because we've now had these games of the RPG genre and people don't like them. But I don't think that necessarily Assassin's Creed was amazingly better back then than some of what we got. And this is where we're going to jump into Origins. <laughs> And I'll then talk about as well a mixture of Syndicate really with that. But effectively, Origins, in my opinion, is in the extremely good. I love Origins. And there is two reasons why. And this is, again, it links in with the Black Flag thing. They did it right with this game. And a lot of people don't give Origins credit. And I know that I'll get some comments telling me about how I'm wrong about my opinion on Origins. And I'm going to make a full video discussing. And it will just be titled, In Defense of Assassin's Creed Origins. The amount of people who have told me... Assassin's Creed Origins sucks. It started the RPG genre. Cool, it started the RPG genre, but outside of that, what actually sucks about it? Okay, uh, Egypt is bland and boring. You're just traveling around a desert. What do you expect? What do you expect? We're in a desert. We are in Egypt. What do you actually expect? When you're going around Black Flag, you're literally just sailing on the sea. But guess what? Nobody complained about it because it was expected to be sailing on the sea in the Caribbean. It made sense. And realistically, you can then just start putting that exact same criticism of going around a desert in a boring desert with every other game out there that's in this franchise or any other game like it. It isn't a valid criticism to levy that you are going around an open desert in a game that is based around Egypt. What do you expect them to do? Do you expect them to just add things in there that weren't going to be a thing? Because if they did, they would be criticised for that as well. I would say a game like Valhalla has awful... <laughs> awful uh, traversal in this game and that's not because it is boring to go around the areas it is simply that the game is designed for you to just not care about exploring origins doesn't necessarily say don't go and explore it actually kind of says oh yeah there's some side content every now and again it may not be amazing side content but overall the areas that you're exploring actually feel like they're worth exploring. The cities that you go to in Origins, the pyramids in Egypt feel like they're worth exploring. The tombs feel like they're worth exploring. All these things feel like they're worth exploring. In Valhalla, they just feel like you're ticking off a box and saying, Oh, I went and found the treasure today. How is that better? It isn't. But anyway, effectively, this is also, in my opinion, a great game because it changed the genre up a little bit. It added the RPG element, sure, and I think a lot of people think this game is like this almighty RPG, like, it did so much and it changed it all. No, it didn't. Origins is literally the stepping stone, and then Odyssey is like the next step, and then Valhalla is the next step. So let, let's, not, let's not get this wrong, okay? Um, I want to just take these out, but I can't. Okay, we're going to put them down and they haven't played because it's accidentally down there now. Uh, but yeah, basically, Origins to me, the main character, loved it. The secondary main character, Aya great i think cleopatra's character great job i also think julius caesar is the main villain amazing the templars the way they were structured in this game it made sense the first dlc for this game phenomenal everything about this game was great from an assassin's creed perspective 
and even a just general game perspective. So yeah, that, that's my take anyway for a rough idea off the top of my head thinking. Uh, and then I'll make a video about in defense of Assassin's Creed Origins. Where I'll go more in depth and I'll actually have more of a think to myself. Try and complete an entire thought process about this game. Next up, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It is a you could miss out on it. It's not an awful game, I think, for the most part. You could enjoy it. I've known people who have enjoyed it. And my opinion is just that it's not a good Assassin's Creed game. It's an okay game. And as an RPG, sure. But fundamentally, I think they were trying too hard that they didn't know where they wanted to go with this game. They were like, oh, let's remove a main character of being a main character and give you an RPG element. And they tried to basically go like the witch route of having a character with personality, but they ended up with two characters, the main characters with zero personality. It's one of those that I have to sit down here. Now, as a game, it's probably better than Rogue. As a game, it's probably better than Assassin's Creed 1, so we'll leave it here. But fundamentally, I think these two still did more for the franchise of Assassin's Creed from a story perspective, from a just general way of telling the story perspective, than Odyssey ever did. So as an Assassin's Creed tier list, it's coming down here. Uh, so, yeah. Now, next up, we've got, and finally, Valhalla. Burn it. <laughs> uh, obviously, if you know anything about me, you know I hate Valhalla. This is one of my main criticisms of this franchise for vast different reasons. One, the combat's terrible. Secondly, the traversal's terrible. Thirdly, the auto-sprinting horse that takes you for 15 minutes somewhere whilst just scrolling on social media. Dreadful. Uh, the way they marketed this game, scummy. The way they allow creator's codes to go check out the game to make it look like an Assassin's Creed game. And in fact, it wasn't. It was a Viking simulator. Very scummy. And then as well as that, obviously adding in elements, trying to make us think that we were going back to old school Assassin's Creed games by adding assassins into the game that you basically speak to for like 10 minutes collectively. And the fact that, you know, they tried to show off social stuff as if that was a big feature of this game, when in fact, it wasn't. It was a feature that when I played it for 70 hours, I used twice. And one of those was because I was forced to use it. The other time was because I tried to use it properly. However, the game's just not populated enough. Overall, this game is a train wreck, in my opinion. I think this game is awful. It wasn't done right. They could have done so much more. And I will be revisiting that. And I have mentioned this in another video saying that I will revisit it at some point. Now, in my opinion, I think that this is the best all-round way of looking at these games maybe you could argue that like you know some of them like i would maybe say like okay rogue is in the eh, it's okay odyssey's in the air eh, it's okay you could probably then argue assassin's creed 3 could be missed out on you could also argue that over the course of time like you could probably say that origins or like one of these two games are in the I'd actually say these two are actually correctly put in there, <laughs> actually. I don't think any of these are actually in the incorrect positions here. But yeah, overall, I do think that this is probably the best overall way of looking at it. Now, you guys might disagree with me. That's 100%. Let me know what you would class as your tier list. But for me, I can't put Assassin's Creed Valhalla in a section of a you could miss out on because that's me basically saying you could go play it. Don't play it. it it's dreadful. You'll be wasting your life away. Go play something else, or more importantly, go do something else with your life instead of playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. But yeah, all around, that is my perspective of the Assassin's Creed franchise. And when Mirage comes out, we'll see where it ends up sitting on a tier list eventually. And we'll see what happens with Mirage. But before you leave this video, two things. One, I'm going to pitch to you this in a second. However, I'm also going to show you in a second my video, or at least the trailer for, well, the first intro sequence for my Rise and Fall of Assassin's Creed that will be coming very soon as of basically like probably a week after this video releases. And I'll be going through the entire rise of the franchise, the falling decline of it, and the possible hope moving forward. So you'll see that in a second. But by the time you see this video, if these are still available, go over to minimaldesigns.com. And that is Minimal Designs with a Y instead of an I. It'll be down in the description and you can buy one of these wallets for yourself as well. Great quality. All around, I was actually very surprised when I first got these. I was like, yeah, these are actually quite good. And then when the proper batch of them came in i was like wow this is actually so much better quality than i thought they were but yeah all in all 
if you are interested go check them out and then let's just go straight to the effective trailer for the rise and fall of assassin's creed and i'll see you guys in the next video now i remember playing assassin's creed 2 back on the xbox 360 and at the time i was only nine years of age but this game was the game for me it was the game that made me fall in love with the lore of assassin's creed and i know i'm not the only one we also got assassin's creed brotherhood and a few years later we got black flag which in my opinion was the peak of this entire franchise the reputation hadn't been tarnished just yet and we were actually getting great stories and time settings to jump straight into Sadly though, it was only a year later that we begun to fall down this slippery slope and eventually led to the travesty of a game known as Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I don't understand how we went from a franchise that cared so much about historical accuracy, or at least did to a degree that they removed crossbows from the first game to where we now are fighting Minotaurs within Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Norse gods within Valhalla. Well, actually, I do know why, which is exactly why this video exists. So let's discuss the rise and fall of Assassin's Creed.